Happy Tuesday. Thank you for joining me here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. That's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. Uh, it's a time that we can relax and craft together uh, for about an hour. And I work through projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the whole process along the way. Uh, you can stitch with me, ask your questions, and just come hang out and chit chat. Uh, so tonight we are continuing on the Betts White Lil Felt Village uh, stitch along of the Spooky Clock Tower. So this is a 12 month stitch along that comes out with the seasons. The spring and summer season have already been released and are available and we are in the middle of the autumn one and the winter collection is still to be released yet. There are these 3D little felt houses uh, and uh, they're kind of reminiscent of those uh, ceramic holiday houses, but it goes with the seasons and they are adorable. We are working on the spooky clock tower. Uh, ours is looking a little bit more collegiate, I think, because of the colors we chose or a little more uh, Hogwarts ish. Hogwarts -ish. <laughs> Got some, some burgundy and gold going with it. Uh, so we're going to continue on that tonight. It, it's uh, more embroidery for us tonight, embroidery on felt. But Betts has re released the uh, uh, assembly instructions. So um, once we finish this embroidery, we, we can move on to assembly. So some of you guys, if you are part of the club already, you guys might have actually finished it. So if you have finished it, be sure to post uh, in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. I'd love to see. And if you're interested in this project at all, uh, there's a link below if you wanted to find out more info on it. Uh, so I'm going to flip you guys around and we'll start stitching. All right, so here is what I ended up storing storing uh, the project in. So I, I found found a bin. It has everything in here except for the the um, uh, vellum. I'm just kind of like letting lay on top because I don't want to bend that very much yet. Uh, so all right, I even have my little scraps here just in case we want them. All right, I'm gonna just pull this whole stack out, and I'll just. I can check in on those if I need them later. So, all right, we left off. I'm gonna go to my iPad here. There's little Zeb, we'll need him. But here is the, um, the instructions. It is on teachable.com. So that's, uh, it's not a monthly fee or anything like that. It's just uh, a place where teachers can show their lessons. And that's what Betts is using for this. So we are on the stitching, the clock house. So we've done, we're, we're getting there with it. So here's, here's our clock tower, our clock house. Um, so everything's glued on. We've done all this. We've glued it on. All right. We are on to the stitching aspect of it. So we have to mark our little pieces and do our stitching. So that is the plan to start out. Uh, let's just see what's next. So stitching the roof is next. Okay, so we're gonna have to draw on our little roof shape and make all those fun shingles. Oh, that is cute. All right, so hopefully we can get a good start on this yet tonight too, but I just wanna look ahead. So here's the stabilizing the clock tower. You know, it has, um, so that's when we're gonna start putting things onto that Peltex, uh, that'll be interesting. I haven't used that before. Oh, she's using a pressing cloth. Okay, that'll be fun. I, I'm, I'm jumping ahead, but um, that'll be neat to start doing that. So let's just go black, back to the um, clock house, and I'm going to start this uh, part right there. Okay, so back at it. I'm gonna get my, um, my, uh, pen out here first. Let's see, where is that? Here we go. I got my little friction pen that I'm using. It seems to be working okay. So I need to mark where, um, where the stitching should be. So, uh, let's see. 
I'm just using the image as a guide. It looks like one goes up here and down here. So we're kind of making bricks. And I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this in the the burgundy color. Uh, kind of like what we did here. So I, I've been kind of doing burgundy for our little our, our little cement bricks here, just because that's kind of that's what we used here, and I thought it was really cute. Uh, but I think we're gonna do the actual clock face in black. So we'll have a little bit of a contrast there. They'll be a little bit different, the windows versus the clock. Okay, and then it looks like there's two stitches in the middle here, so I'm gonna just kind of estimate that. Here. All right, let's get the other side on. So we're gonna do a blanket stitch like how we did uh, the other, where's that? Here we go. The other little windows. So here's um, windows that we did before. These lines will go away once we add heat, but I don't wanna do that yet because, um, well, we'll be adding heat once we uh, put the fusible on, so I'm not going to worry about it right now. But how these are done, little blanket stitch along the outside, that is, that's how we're going to do these windows. And then this, the clock, gets, uh, gets, a, gets the blanket stitch on the inside. Okay, there we go. Now, I'm going to mark the clock, but the clock is going to be at actual like clock numbers, right? So, um, and it's, it doesn't go all the way uh, to the top. So let's get right above. I'm going to stand up above this because I want to, I want to, I'm, eyeball, I'm eyeballing it, but I want it to be as much at 12 and 6. I want to get them all as vertical and horizontal to this as I can. So, all right, let's do three o'clock and nine o'clock. All right, now I gotta like get in here. So I'm kind of imagining, you know, a pivot point in the center and I'm aiming towards that and I'm just kind of estimating the middle or the two middle ones. But thinking about a center point will help like the angle of the line be a little bit better. Oh gosh, that one it wasn't very placed very well. I might redo that one a little bit. Yeah, that one's not good at all. Let's let's scooch that one up a little. There we go. <laughs> ah, a little kooky. We might have to might have to go back to that one. I'm gonna have to pay attention to that one because that one got a little off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That looks like a clock. Okay. <laughs> let's uh, get our burgundy out. I'm going to do, let's do the windows first. Uh, I am, I've just been pulling from here. I've been leaving the tags on for now. So I'm pulling the thread that's from the large label side. And I'm going to just, let's pull like two. That's like one pull and then two pulls. I think that's probably enough for, for this, hopefully. Let's grab a scissors. We will see. We got pretty close last time. All right, and I got, I got Zeb here. I'm gonna grab a embroidery needle. There we are. All right. I'm using all six strands. It makes it a little more difficult to thread. So I'm using that pinched method. Look, I got ink all over me, crazy. Um, so I'm pinching the tip and I'm releasing just a little, and the moment I can see that little tiny bit of thread, I'm gonna put my uh, the eye of my needle and I'm gonna kind of wiggle the eye of the needle down. And at that point, it should be threaded and I'm just gonna grab, grab that thread and pull it through. Yes, Zeb, isn't he cute? That is from Fish Museum and Circus, Deborah, um, on, on Etsy. Oh, 
we got a kind of a goofy thing here. So uh, the corners, I'll start at a corner here, but we're kind of not doing a blanket stitch at the corner. So I think I have a little plan for that. Um, and I'll show you when we get there. So let's just start at the corner here. Okay, so we're going up through the window and then back out uh, at the line here. And we're making sure that our loop is, that our needle is coming through, through the loop so that our thread catches that loop and that's what's gonna make our stitch. There, see here, here our thread is catching the loop. That's our first little blanket stitch there. So in through the middle and then out at that point again, I'm gonna get, put this thread behind the needle so the needle's going through my thread loop again. Okay, so now here's a goofy thing. Usually with a blanket stitch, um, I would do one from the corner and then one from here too, but in this design, we're only going um, to the corner. Let's see, how am I gonna do this? I think I may need to, um, so this is kind of what I do for the chain stitch if I reach a point. Like in theory, I need to come back out of that exact same point to make the next blanket stitch, but I can't come out of that exact same point because the thread will just come out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the to the back and I'm gonna loop it around one of the previous stitches, just like that. And now I can come up in that exact same hole again, and it's not gonna come out because it's looped, it's looped around. So that's like a little trick if you are doing some sort of stitch and uh, you can't come out of the same hole. You just grab grab that stitch from before, and uh, then you can continue on. There. Then we'll have a square brick at at uh, this end here, and it'll still be still be framed. Scooch this bottom. Sorry, I think I'm missing a little bit of the conversation today. <laughs> uh, catching what I can while I stitch. These are looking awfully cute though. Yeah, if you guys are working on a, the spooky clock tower, um, I'd love to see your progress over in the Penguin Fish Crafters group. All right, here again. Gosh, I hope I have enough floss. Here again, I'm gonna grab that last stitch because I need to come up the same one. If I don't have enough thread, then I'll, at least I'll know for the next window. So I haven't added any extra embroidery yet. We talked about maybe adding some ivy and that sort of thing. Um, to do that, we're gonna kind of have to picture what this is gonna look like assembled because if I want ivy like crawling up the side, in theory that needs to be stitched before we start assembling, before we do the like the Peltex stabilizer. Um, so, uh, So we'll have to take a look at that, but let's let's do everything that's 
suggested in the instructions first. So we'll have um, we'll have um, that roof to do yet. Yep, I am still using the six strands. The six strands gives it like a nice hefty line, which I think looks good with the felt here. I mean, you could use less strands, like two or three strands, and everything would just look just a little bit more delicate. Oh, Robin, I missed it, but is there a new, uh, a new baby in the fam? <laughs> That's what it kind of, kind of sounds like. All right, we are almost there and I think I'm going to have just enough floss, which is great because then I'll use the same amount for the, for the other window, that other rectangular window. Yeah, I'm going to have just enough. All right. And I'm going to finish by making that one more stitch to that corner. And there we are. Cute. All right, so I'm going to tie this off. Just grab one of these last stitches here. And um, then we'll get the other side. Oh, your baby has a baby. That's exciting, Robin. <laughs> Congrats. Neato. Neato, neato. All right, there we are with the knot. Let me just snip that off. All these knots are gonna get covered up. That really blends in, you can hardly see it, can you? Um, they're gonna get covered up by the Peltex when we do that. There, cute. All right, so I'm gonna do this one just because then it'll be, you know, the same thing. So I'm gonna, I use two pulls. I'm gonna do one, two. That seems to be just exactly right. Wow, look, we've used a ton of this floss. We are almost out, <laughs> crazy. But you know, I think we're just about done with it too. Oh, that's nice, Robin. All right, thread this. Robin. I do like the colors. Oh, you guys, I didn't, um, if you are just starting on this, I forgot I didn't show you what this looks like. I'm going to just back up here just so you know what we're doing even. Uh, oops, that's too far. Uh, this is all, every single one of the projects in here um, so far that have been released. But here, that's, that's the clock tower right, right here. <laughs> so that's what we're making. We're, we're working on these little windows up here and this clock right here. So that's that's where we're at right now, this top section. Um, we did this middle section and the bottom section. We got all these cute things. That'll come later once we're assembled, it looks like maybe. Um, fun! But yeah, top section and then we still got that roof to do yet. So yeah, I forgot to, forgot to show you guys even what we're doing here. Um, so that's, that's that. But yeah, we're going from the bottom up, I guess, on, on uh, the clock tower here. All right, more blanket stitches. Um, I'm thinking about it, Gina. Um, we'll see what the, the holiday ones are. It might be fun to do, um, you know, I don't know, a winter one. I have some family that, that, uh, collect the um, ceramic ones. They might be interested in a little felt one, who knows. All right, here's that first corner. So I'm gonna do that kind of ending stitch where I gotta grab a stitch from the back just so I can come up in the same, same hole here. What is the yellow in the window? Oh, so 
That is where the vellum comes in. So look, we have this vellum. I don't know, I haven't read the instructions for this yet, but this vellum is gonna go there. And then <laughs> we have these cute little, uh, like battery powered little guys here. And uh, I think they just turn on. Or I have to pull like a piece of plastic away. Oh, there we go. So there, there it's on. So that will go, It'll actually sit in in the clock tower. One can go at the bottom, and there's like two little pedestals. But then it'll it'll glow like that. Ah, cool, isn't that neat? <laughs> it actually flickers a little bit too, which makes it like extra super duper fun. Like look at it flicker. Oh, that's fun. Uh, and then we'll we still have to put those tiny little clock uh, hands on here, but I think it goes right on the vellum, so we won't do that till right at the end is my guess. I haven't read those instructions yet, but it is gonna be cute. I think that, uh, I think Betts uses that technique in a lot of, um, a lot of these houses too, uh, where you can throw a candle in there so they, so it lights up. For sure there's a lighthouse, that for sure has a candle in, and I think, um, some of the other ones do as well. It's just like a cute little touch for sure. So yeah, that, I'm, I'm pretty stoked for that part. Man, maybe we won't do any extra embroidery just so we can get it built because I want to I wanna get that vellum in and everything. But, you know, even if we didn't do extra embroidery, we could still, with that tacky glue, um, with that tacky glue, we could still make stuff and glue it on here. So, like, we talked about having, like, a little owl. Um, we could just make an owl out of our scrap wool and glue it on afterwards and it, we could actually just glue some green floss and that could be our vine it wouldn't even need to be stitched it could just be kind of glued going up and you know I don't know little felt leaves or something so uh there's options for us if we decide to move ahead and not embroider the extra stuff on now I think we can still decorate later. I don't know, we'll see. We got this in the roof to, to go before we work on that. Oh, cool, Robin, uh, you got your book to make the Triangle Tangle Quilt. There are so many patterns in that book, aren't there? It's just, it's a good, it's, uh, you know, she makes a bajillion of those books. So it's almost like a magazine, like it. it's even, designated like an issue like it's issue five volume one or something you know so there's there's just a ton of them but what's so funny is when we went to uh when we went to missouri star quilt co me and john randomly by the way <laughs> it was kind of awesome um there was a quilt that he liked in that each each um each store is like a different well each room or each store is a different kind of theme. So there's a primitive theme or room and the primitives, that's kind of like your plaids and your like, you know, kind of um, earthy tone plaids, that sort of thing. Um, what are those fabrics called where it's just woven so it's the same on the front and back? Like that type of plaid. Uh, and he liked a really kind of simple quilt in there with a ragged edge and that quilt happens to be in the same issue um, of the triangle tangle quilt in the book so it's it's the same issue so we got got lucky the quilts that both of us liked are in that book yeah like a flannel that's not what I'm thinking of the word though it, it, there's some sort of word for homespun that's it Bonnie yep homespun um, so that's like where the thread is colored first and then it's woven and then that's how you get the plaid. So it, by, by the nature of that, it's the same on both sides and um, homespun, that's, that's the word I'm thinking of. Um, but yeah, so there's a whole room of that <laughs> and he, he really liked uh, um, one of those and yeah, and it's in the same issue. Maybe we'll have to make that sometime. I'm not sure I really have any of those fabrics, but you know. Can always buy more, I suppose. Actually, that would be, it's almost like shirting fabric, so it would be kind of cool 
to recycle a bunch of old shirts for that quilt and do like that little ragged edge on it. That, that might be kind of fun. I'll have to find that one. Um, I'll have to find that book. Maybe I'll, I'll, or I'll find that project in the book. Maybe next time I'll, book's far away from me right now, but um, tomorrow maybe I'll take a look at that again. I got all the corners here, didn't I? Yep, got got yammering and just kept stitching. <laughs> I didn't, wasn't really paying attention, but it looks like I got everything I needed to, so good. All right, just tying a little knot here. Yeah, it might be the rag quilt, because I think it had, I think it was just squares and it had um, raw edges. If I remember correctly, it's been a while since I looked at other quilts from that book. It's been sitting, waiting for me to work on the Triangle Tango some more. All right, windows are done. Let's do the clock face. So I don't think the designs were different here. To embroider the tick marks of the clock, mark them with disappearing ink pen. We did that. Then take two stitches in place. Okay, I'm reading the instructions here. Bring the floss to the back and take a small stitch right behind it to anchor it before moving to the next stitch. Oh, interesting. So this is not this is not a blanket stitch. I thought it was going to be a blanket stitch on the inside, but it's not. It's um, it looks like it's two stitches, and then you kind of move on from the back to the next stitch. Okay. Um, so we don't we don't want to see these extra extra lines on the edge or anything. We just want some bold stitches. And so I'm gonna do that with the the black here. I'm gonna get three pulls out of here just because we're doing two stitches and that kind of makes me nervous about not having enough. All right. Yeah, it's dangerous that shopping for fabrics. That's where um, <laughs> that's where I got all the triangle tango fabrics and I didn't even buy a lot like that was just all like a couple half yards of fabric I held off crazy held off um there was a whole lot more I could have bought there for sure um uh, but oh my gosh that fabric is gonna last me for freaking ever okay let's let's start at six o'clock here I'm leaving Maybe about an eighth of an inch edge here. Okay, so she said go around this part twice. So we, we just, I think we're just going for a super bold line. A double bold. So this is a 12 thread line. There we go. So that's going to make it just extra. Um, much so. Okay, now I'm going to go to the back. And I think I just, I'm going to catch the back of this stitch, it sounds like. Just so our thread stays on the back. And then I'm going to start my next stitch from the back. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're doing this right. There we go. Ooh, some extra bold lines. These are pretty. Okay, so we're gonna go around there again. All right, and again, through the middle to the back. All right, and I'm gonna catch these back stitches again, because I don't want I don't want these sliding up to the front. I want all to stay back there. Cool, so it's just looking like a couple of stitches wrapped around the edge there, but look how bold that is. So I'm doing that other color now too, just to make it um, stand out an extra amount. And it kind of, this black goes with this black border. If you look close, this this clock has a, a black border and it's, you know, making it three levels thick too, which is cool. So um, yeah, I like this double line for sure. Okay, next one is... Get over there. There we go. Uh -oh. oh, 
Gretchen, that sounds fun. going through the middle. Catch that end again. Yeah, these are looking nice and bold. Taking a little while to do, but it's gonna look good. Quarter of the way done. Just kind of scrunching them with my fingers a little bit. Oh, Robin, are you going to the same, um, same, uh, oh gosh, quilt retreat? <laughs> I couldn't remember the word retreat. That'd be kind of cool. Is it a retreat where you have to bring your sewing machine and everything? I have not done one of those before either. My mom and I have very, very barely uh, thought that it would be fun to do, fun to uh, host a quilt retreat at some point. <laughs> I think mostly we just want to make stuff, have an excuse to do nothing but quilting for, for a weekend. <laughs> uh, it would be fun. I've been on like a little retreat before, but it wasn't one where I brought my um, sewing machine and all that. That would be kind of interesting. Gosh, I, I has anyone ever flown with their sewing machine? That would be a challenge, I would think. Oh my god, Gretchen, that sounds totally amazing. <laughs> Oh, it just sounds relaxing. Oh, I want to be there. <laughs> it sounds so relaxing. There's nothing better than a lake. Oh, dang. Yeah, that's a cheap, uh, that's an inexpensive um, retreat for sure. From what I can tell of retreats. All right, a little over halfway. Oh, it wasn't hard with a featherweight. That's awesome. I have never actually seen a featherweight in real life before, so I've not had the experience of getting to actually see how small they are and pick one up or anything. That would be just cool. Oh, a featherweight sits under the fits under the seat. Dang, that's uh, that's uh. That gets the kitten emoji with like pulling their sunglasses down. <laughs> That's doing it right. Oh, brought a small baby lock. Gosh, I would have to carry it on because. Who knows how they're going to handle any of that. Or you'd have to pack it so crazy, I would think. 
<laughs> I should get one. You know, I have my eyes open. If ever, I mean, like, it's not like I need another sewing machine, but I just like the idea of it. But I know they're super popular, like, and they're priced for it, too. So, I mean, like, I haven't seen one, you know, less than $300 and, you know, nowhere near me or anything like that. Um, it's kind of one of those magic things that people just magically a uh, acquire, it seems like. <laughs> um, so... If that happens someday, then that, that's how I'll get one. Oh, you bought a, a travel case, especially for it. Oh, I bet you like um, a camera gear, you know, like those, like camera, you know, uh, video people, they use some hefty uh, gear, um, what are they called? Like gorilla cases or something. They use some hefty uh suitcases to to pack yeah I think something like that it's all filled with foam and you take out the right amount of foam so your thing fits and then it's like a super hard case actually that's a good idea that's how it would have to be done but oh that would be so heavy gosh would it even get the weight limit it's isn't it like a 70 pound weight limit I, I mean I guess the sewing machine isn't quite that heavy but yeah no it's close all right this is where I kind of goofed up where my lines went so I'm gonna Eek it out a little bit down lower. If I can get this needle coming up in a decent spot. There we go. See, I guess. Oh, is it 50 pounds is the weight limit for planes now? And then I'm sure you still have to pay an extra ton. Tuto has sewing cases you can fly with. Interesting. Well, I'm sure there's got to be a thing. You're right, because... People go on retreats, they, you know, someone's going to invent some sort of carrier. Interesting, that's smart. Someone's smart out there. Filling the needs of the consumer. <laughs> All right. All right, I think we evened out these ones that I drew on kind of goofy. So this is the last one. I need to just go around twice. And we got some nice bold lines on here. I think I just go around with the back and we'll tie this off. 12 pounds is a featherweight? Oh my gosh. Did not realize they were that light. Ugh. Like that um that 1960s Kenmore that I have is so heavy. Like it's it's way heavier than the one from 19. 74 or whatever um and it's way heavier than that black uh crinkle steampunk Kenmore too it's so heavy I would never be able to carry that anywhere um it belongs in a cabinet is really where it belongs but yeah a little featherweight that'd be fun fun little deal that will be something that I randomly acquire. Like it's, it's, it, that would be something where I go to an estate sale in the neighborhood that someone's doing their own estate. Well, they wouldn't be doing their own estate sale, but their own like rummage sale, um, where they don't know the value of it because any quick search on the internet and someone's going to be like, Oh dang, these are worth $300. I'm going to charge $300. You know what I mean? Versus the person who's just dumping it on the side of the street. You know what I mean? Who it's, it's just another thing. Um, that's how I need to acquire one. <laughs> Walking around the neighborhood and someone in my neighborhood has one, right? And I, and I just like offer them money for it. <laughs> Give you 30 bucks, 40 bucks for it even. <laughs> that would be cool. All right, you guys, that is a clock. Um, all right. I just want to peek. What's it going to look like with the Ugh, the vellum is just going to add, like, such a cool touch to this. I'm pretty stoked about that. All right, we are done with that step. I'm going to move on to stitching the roof. So we don't have a lot of time left, but maybe we can at least draw draw it on. i got to peek. Peek at this. So here's, um, here's it in layers. So this layer goes up here. And we have little platforms there's little platforms in between. Um, 
So you'll, you will have a little bit of black. And the black, the platform on the inside, we're going to make stabilize that. And that's what, that's what our um, light is going to stand on, too, are these, these little platforms. And it even has um, a hole in one, so the light from the bottom can go up through there. And then the next light can go up on here. I think it's something like that. I haven't read the assembly instructions yet. I bet you I could find out real quick. Okay, and then here's our roof. So that's what we need to mark the lines for. Here's kind of our guide. Oh, and this gets those um, chain stitches going up at like like this did as well. That's pretty cute. I do like that. Um, so I think for the roof, I think let's do that in black. I know we we did um, these bricks in burgundy, but these aren't really bricks. They're kind of shingles. So I think let's do this whole thing in black and that will go with, um, so we're going to have like this little, these little spikes on top of it yet. So I think black will kind of go with, with these spikes. Just trying to manipulate it a little bit here. There we go. Cute. <laughs> That's so silly. Yeah, I'm going to do black. I think that'll look nice. Okay, let's scooch these out of the way. Uh, get this guy out. Let's see if there's any tips, because we are just hand kind of drawing all this. Um, all right. Referencing the template, lightly mark the roof piece using a ruler and disappearing ink pen. So ruler. Let's, let's do that. So I do have this cute little ruler here. Um, so it did look in the, in the instructions, it looked like one little thing is they did connect, connect these corners to help out. Oh, whoops, you guys, I'm supposed to be doing it on this side. I suppose it doesn't really matter, but I still have the template on here. There we go. Let's go on this side doesn't really matter. I think it's the same. Um, I think they're um, equal on both sides. Okay, so there are three bits here and it kind of looks like we're dividing it into thirds. So let's just peek. What is this? This is um, one and three eighths. Okay, how do we divide that up? So it's like a hair less than a half is what we're doing. So um, what I could do is I'm just going to center, center um, it in between, and I'm going to just take the center point here. So right there. Let's do the same thing here. I hope this is a good idea. <laughs> Maybe I'm getting picky. I probably could just eyeball this, but I'm just trying to get little center points and then we can draw those and then we can just draw more center points. So I'm going to draw lines. Again, I'm, I'm kind of trusting that this um, I'm trusting that this friction pen ink is going to come out good enough because I'm just going to draw straight lines here. But we'll try and do them pretty light like what, what Beth said in the instructions. All right. Um, we do need one more row of stitches here. So just as a reminder, I'm going to just draw a line right on the edge here. That's my reminder that I need to actually stitch one more row of chain stitches. So, all right, I'm going to just connect these dots and just hit the line. Hopefully that'll get me close enough to where I need to be. Feeling like an architect again here. Okay, there's my mark. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. I wonder if I can just estimate in the middle of these. Oh yeah, just don't take it outside. Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, Robin, I'm, I try to actually avoid using these pens, but I uh, was wary of using my washable one, and I, I have an air erase pen, and I don't know where that is. <laughs> so, so I'm airing on the side of this, this pen again. Um, so that's fine. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to grab a different ruler here. There, and we can just measure what I need and um, draw it. So I think I need like a hair less than three eighths, right? That looks right. So I'm just, I'm just going like It's like five sixteenths. We're just estimating. There, that looks fine. I'm going in the middle of. Oh, I can't see very well. I'm going in the middle of that third sixteenth of an inch. We'll do the same on the other side. So we'll get this all planned for tomorrow and then we'll we'll stitch stitch it tomorrow. So it's a good thing that uh Betts is releasing these instructions little by little because I was not ready to um assemble this tonight yet. Yeah, looking pretty parallel. <laughs> Might be a hair off. We gotta put our little triangle bumps in here yet too. But I think this is probably the scary part. Alright, last one. good. All right, now we need to get all these little bumps in. So is there any rhyme and reason to this? So it looks like the top and bottom are the same, like we do one in the middle and then two that kind of match on the side. Actually, they don't quite match. The middle ones match. And then we're just kind of filling in the blank in between. And then, then the middle ones are offset from there. Okay. Oh, and the middle one goes up, up to, um, our center point there too. So I'm gonna start, they're all the same. So I'm gonna start, let's add a little bump right in the middle here. So I'm, uh, this, this is where I'm gonna just eyeball things. There we go, there's a bump. One here, then I'm just gonna divide that in half, pretty much, divide this guy in half and divide these in half. All right, and then these, I'm gonna kind of just go in the middle of those other ones, just totally estimating. And then these ones get a little blip going up to the next, next section as well. All right, we did that. So there, there is my markings a little bit closer up, if you can see. So I have the three lines. I put a center on the top and the bottom, and then kind of centered from here to my line did another one here to the line, did a centered, and then the middle one, I just centered in between, kind of like, you know, like a, like an X almost, and going up to the next line. So we just need to do that on every one. Middles are easiest to start out with. Middle, middle. Um, center, middle of these two points, middle of these two points. Same here and here, and then middle of that, going to the next one, and going to the last one. 
you trace the whole pattern. Oh, your tracing disappeared. Oh no! And uh, oh, that's a good idea. Oh, that's smart, Robin. If you if you've accidentally um, accidentally pressed, if you if you if you're using a friction pen ever, and if you accidentally heated up with the iron before you need to, yeah, that's a great. That's a really good tip. Throw it in the freezer. Um, throw like the fabric or whatever you're working on in the freezer, and your lines will come back. So in that case, that's a good thing. If you're uh, bringing a quilt that has friction lines all over it, friction pen lines all over it, and you're taking the quilt outside in the fall or winter, then uh, you might not like the lines coming back so much. But in most cases, you're kind of covering up these lines. Um, you don't really want to sketch with these on fabric and then only stitch your good line and then to, and then use it to get rid of the sketch marks, that's not a good idea because you can actually see where the ink fills in the little holes of the fabric and it can sometimes discolor your fabric as well. So I'm only kind of using this where I'm covering it up. I mean, there is a little kind of line underneath here that we won't be covering it up, but I think my floss is going to be thick enough that it's going to work itself out. All right. Wow, that's a lot of marking. So we are good to go. Um, I think we'll start this fresh tomorrow. And this is gonna be this is gonna be a bit of stitching. So all of this is gonna be back stitched, and then we we also need to when that's done, we need to go back and do our um, chain stitching up the four edges here. So that's gonna take this is gonna take some time, but. Um, after that, we're in theory done with the embroidery, unless we want to add any extra. But again, I'm kind of wary of that because if I did vines I would or ivy, I would want it to go up more than one level. Um, so maybe we look at the assembly instructions first and then see how things line up. And then once we know how things line up, then maybe I can add like a couple, maybe. So we'll see. Um, all right. Here we are. I'm going to call it an evening and we got our cute little clock done here. So that's that's some work done tonight. We are moving forward. All right, I'm going to flip you guys around. Hello. So we will continue this tomorrow for sure and we'll probably be working on this for the rest of the week. Um, we, we will. Because uh, even if we get the embroidery done, then we'll be working on the assembly. We'll get started on the assembly. So I'm excited for that. This little roof is going to be so freaking cute once we have all the stitching on. Look at all the detail. There's a lot going on there. It's going to be awesome. All right. So I will get this up on YouTube uh, at Penguin and Fish Movies. And again, if this is a project you'd like to join in on, um, it is 12 different designs. And uh, uh, the first... I think this is probably the, maybe the eighth or so. I don't know. There's, there's, most of them are released already, which is great. Then you have all the instructions uh, and then the winter ones still need to be released yet. So um, I'm going to keep working on this spooky clock tower and who knows, maybe we'll stitch up another one of these houses because they are just so cute. So again, that link is below uh, and I will see you guys tomorrow. So have a great rest of your Tuesday. Good night.